Friday personality profile on PM Express. And guess who's on this Friday? He has led a fast-paced, multifaceted life and shows no sign of slowing down. He's been a teacher, journalist, author, communication specialist, and winner of several literary awards, a regional minister and minister of state. As a strong Pan-Africanist who saw the birth of Ghana, he believes we are lacking behind. Hello, good evening and welcome. In Ghana, we have a rather interesting system of government. We have a central government that has been decentralized. Although the central government controls the economy, how money is made and spent? Real development happens at the district level. This means MMDCs have a crucial role to play in delivering the desired development in their respective district. Whether a community receives the needed facility and infrastructure is dependent on its local government. We can choose to focus on the availability of funds for projects, but the full realization of the vision embedded in our decentralization project is jeopardized if the caliber of people appointed to be the face of government at the local levels lack the necessary skills to perform their functions successfully. People fight tooth and nail to be appointed into office at the local government level. Their performance most often leaves much to be desired, which would account for all the opposition altercations that, have, that we have seen nationwide this year. Is this a popularity contest, reward system, or display of competency? Yesterday we looked at the 2014 budget, which hoped to resolve issues by making funds allocation assessment base. Today I want us to look at the human capital involved in making things work. And the Center for Policy Research has made some recommendations in this area. And so I have in studio Samuel Kingsford Segler, who is a research fellow with the Center for Policy and Research. And just in case we get stuck while assessing the feasibility of the recommendation, we also will be talking to George Chaba for the former president for the National Association of Local Authorities in Ghana. And he will join us later. My name is Nanan Sakwa and this is PM Express. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. And today we are discussing who runs the local government. We want to find out what competencies they have. We want to find out how we measure them. How do we put them to task to make sure that every penny that goes into the local government is actually yielding uh, the results that it went there for. And with me in the studio is Samuel Kingsford Sekler, Research Fellow for Center for Policy and Research. Uh, Samuel, welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, George Chebafo will join us on the phone later as the discussions uh, go on. But I'm not going to go straight to the point. You want MMDCs to also have a uh, sign a two-year bond of competency and sort of reward so we, we can mark them. Yeah. And why is that? Or how do you come about that? Well, thank you. Uh, as you rightly said, the DCs or MMDCs have a critical role to play 
in our national development. Now, if you look at the roles or the duties of a DC, as in the Local Government Act Act 462, the DC runs the day-to-day -day administrative activities of the district assembly. Now, you are going to have uh, heads of decentralized agencies, such as the Ministry of Health, the District Director of Health, for instance, may be a medical doctor in most cases. You're going to have um, the District Director of Education and all these people reporting to the District Chief Executive. Now, it tells you the caliber of person needed to do this kind of job. Mm -hmm. It's going to chair the District Security Committee, District Executive Committee meetings, and he is going to be the face of government at the local level. Mm -hmm. Now, such a person should not be just anybody. In the past, we've had instances where party loyalists were appointed to hold such positions just because they helped the party to win power or whatever. But what we are saying is that we have to move from that era into a new era where competency will be the, uh, the, the, the criteria for appointing such persons. Mm -hmm. So in May, for instance, we issued a statement calling on the government just before the DCs were appointed that government should look critically at the competence level of the people who will be appointed. If the person is a party person and has all the, the, the requirements, fine, let the person do the job. But if not, get somebody who is more qualified. We, for instance, we said the person should have at least three years working experience in the public service or the private sector. So that he would know the basic administrative skills required to run such an organization. The position is a chief executive position, so you can compare it with that of a corporate organization. Now, what we are saying is that these people should be on performance contracts. It shouldn't be the case that the person is appointed and remains in office as long as the president is in office. What about if the person is not performing? Then the development of the area is going to be delayed for as long as the person remains in office. So put them on, on performance contracts for, say, two years. Mm -hmm. Set targets for them. The target should be based on the district development plan. If at the end of the two-year term, the person is not able to perform, fire the person, bring someone else who is ready to do the job. So here we have where, you know, my brothers, the chiefs. Yes. As soon as the position becomes vacant, we get our best can take love out. Get Ochiami, get the staff. Mm -hmm get all the elders in the town and say, hey, we want Samuel to be the DC. He went to school here. He's lived here all his life. He has a farm here or he, you know, he's graduated in uh, something else. And then the president is under pressure to say, well, if I don't agree to their demands, they're going to reject me. And so, you know, you, you tend to, we, we tend to force somebody onto the government dialogue. This is who we want. And if you bring anybody, we are not working with him. What we have to let the people know, the chiefs and the opinion leaders, is that if they continue doing that, they are delaying their own progress, their own development at their level. So get somebody who has the competency, who is committed to do the work. And we're also telling the president that, yes, have the political will to appoint somebody who is competent. We know that a lot of considerations go into this thing, party mm -hmm. interest and other things. Mm -hmm. But what we're saying is that for the sake of good governance, transparency, and accountability, and the development we want in our society, let us get competent people to do their job. Again, Samuel, you see, uh, the way we run the political, uh, political campaigns yes. is such that you know, it gets very dirty. Mm -hmm. And people put all their credibility and everything, time, money in there, make it really murky, and then bring you so that you become president. Now, when you become president, you say, oh, well, Nana, you're not that competent. He's competent, so I'm going to let him be the DC. I'm going to say, no, I was the one running up and down. You know, where did he come from? So then we have that saga, too, about how you get the president elected and the people he needs to get elected. They all have the like, job for the boys kind of thing. So, well, I'm not saying he's completely incompetent, but maybe that's not his field. But then what do you do? You can't sideline him and then go and bring some nice professors over here. You, you're very well knowledge in local governance. Come and be a local governor. I'm not going to agree. Where was he when we were going up and down? Yes, we understand that it's a very difficult situation for the president. You have several interest groups coming up, lobbying for their candidates to be considered. 
it's, very, it's a very difficult task, mm -hmm. and we, 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 we sympathize with the appointing authority. But at the same time, we cannot sacrifice the development of our society just on the basis of political expediency or whatever. The, the appointing authority should make it clear to the people that, yes, we are here to help you develop. Mm -hmm. If you really want to develop, then let's put this aside. Let's get somebody. I'm sure in every district we can get people who have the competency to perform. Oh, I'm, I'm no doubt. Maybe so 10 in each let's, district. Let's, let's, let's try and put those interests aside. If only we are committed, we want to develop. The people themselves should know that this is development we are talking about. And real development happens at the district level. If you look at our system, you realize that the allocation to the district assembly common fund has increased from 5% to 7.5. It means that more resources are being pushed to the district level. Now, if you don't have somebody who can manage these resources well, then there's a problem. So these are some of the things we should explain to the people. The appointing authority should explain all this to the people. That these are the dynamics involved. We cannot bring somebody just because he's popular, he has helped us, he has brought money. Let that person wait. Let's get people who are committed to do their job. I'll take a break here, and then when we come back, we'll continue uh, this discussion. So does it mean that maybe every district should elect their own local government and probably run their own police and school systems? They know what they need best, but the conversation is very broad. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to uh, this exciting uh, conversation. Who runs the local government? Or basically, who is running the local uh, government? They Meaning, are they competent enough? Are they just there because they held the party coming to power? Are they just here because Omar Hine and his crony said, this is who we want? Or they are there because they know the technicalities in running a local government? And that's something which Samuel, uh, I think... Uh, it's one of those things, maybe we need to sell it to the, to the locals, not even to the government, mm -hmm. so that they then demand that, look, you need to bring us somebody who has got some expertise and likes uh, at least three years in the uh, civil mm -hmm. service. Uh, private sector. Or private sector. Yeah. Yes, I think this is something we should, it, it, we need to embark on a campaign to educate the people and let them know that we need to develop our various districts and municipalities. And for us to do that, to be able to do that, we need competent people. So even though we have interest, yes, I would like my family member to be the DC, but is he competent enough? Will he, br will he be able to bring into the area the kind of development that I will even benefit from? Mm -hmm. If the answer is no, then let's get someone else who can do the job so that collectively we all benefit. So I think we have to embark on this kind of campaign to let the people understand some of these things. The, the, the other difficulty is even asking that, you know, uh, how, how do you, to the locals, I mean, how, what should we measure to know that on a day-to-day -day this DC is working? I mean, week one, we should have a gutter. Week two, we should have a tree planted. Week three, how, how do we measure him? No. I mentioned earlier that they have district development plans. Mm -hmm. And now we are told that we are moving from the activity-based budget system to a program-based budget system, which will bring more efficiency, that we have specific programs and we have expected outcomes. What are the deliverables? So if we say we are coming out with this kind of initiative, and at the end of the initiative we expect A, B, C, and D, now we can measure the DC's performance by that. So we put you on contract. If we have a very effective monitoring and evaluation system, we should know that by the end of year two, you should reach this level in your project implementation. So if at the end of year two, you are not at that level and you don't have any good excuse to give for that, any good explanation, then it means you have not performed. So what would we do? Look at every district and their potential, and then let's say if uh, you, you, your district is very good for palm plantation, mm -hmm. that was your target. Mm -hmm. uh, if your district was good for tourism, that was your target. Mm -hmm. And then unleash them and then say, look, this is, these are the indicators or these are the uh, jobs we expect from you. Yes, I think we cannot have a generic uh, target for all the MMDCs. Every district has its own need. Mm -hmm. They have their own problems, their development challenges. 
So the problem that the DC of BIA will be facing in the Western region is different from what AMA boss will be facing. Mm -hmm. It's different from somebody in Birim South or wherever. So they all have their development needs. So we set the targets based on these development needs. Mm -hmm. So that somebody in BIA, what will matter to him is construction of feeder roads, basic feeder roads. Somebody in Accra would want to modify or beautify the city. Mm -hmm. So there are different priorities. So you set the targets based on all these priorities. And then you measure them. But if you say you want a generic system where you want to measure them, I don't think that will work. The, the two year, is it not too short? Yes, I, I don't think it is too short. Because if, you, if somebody comes into office and the person knows that I'm in office as long as the president remains in office, maybe as it has been the norm, four years. So I know that mm, I have four years, so there's some kind of laxity in the system. The person will relax. But if the person knows that although the president is, is in office for four years, I have only up to two years to justify why I have to continue being in office, the person will work hard. Will, will the local election solve this problem? Yes, it will. If the people elect their own leaders mm -hmm. at the district level, and they know that the, the, the DC so elected knows that if I don't perform at the end of the period, the people are going to vote me out, the person will perform. There will probably be competition among districts because then it means that... The, not necessarily the uh, central government party would be yes. in other areas. Yes. Would it increase? I mean, have you done any research to show that it might increase competition? Maybe there's a CPP uh, guy in the next district, and then there's a PPP guy here. They will compete to see, look, if I develop more than him, you know, I can boast that we do better than him. I don't know. Competition for development? Yeah, what, what I think is that if we, we say we are electing and we have several candidates competing. Now, if you win, you know that you are not the only person. There are other alternatives. So if you don't perform, they will bring the second person to come and do the job. So yes, we are competing, but the system, we are still doing research in the area to see how effective that system will be. But what comes to mind immediately is that at least it will bring some level of efficiency into the system. We have on the phone now uh, Mr. George J. Balfour, who was a former president of the National Association of Local Authorities. So uh, definitely he's an authority to talk on this matter. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. George, we are discussing who runs the local government, i.e. Uh, how sure, what competence they have uh, to run the local government. And if indeed all major developments come from our local, uh, local districts, then we have to make sure whoever goes there hasn't been put there because the chief said so or because the party people preferred him and that we are selecting the right candidate. But that's very tricky because of the way of our political system. Everybody puts their hands together to elect a president and after that they all want a share of the cake. If after that you decided that, oh no, this guy sitting there who did not help uh, is very good for the job, so let's go and bring him, the party boys are just going to get angry with you. I probably wouldn't even work with him in the district. How do we go uh, about that? Well, um, um, if, I, if I understood you clearly, um, you have certain concerns about the, the, the capacity of appointees um, as MMDCs to be able to respond to I mean, appropriately not the, not the capacity, because, I mean, there could be somebody who helped the party, but it's good. But what I'm saying is, normally, you know, these, whoever is elected is normally associated with the ruling party. They don't normally go outside of the party to say, because you are good, come and help us. You need to be within the party. And then the danger is that you might not necessarily be, you know, the man for the job, but you're the closest one to the party. Yeah, you so so clearly. I think it has to do with the person's, um, um, you know, ability. I mean, his his, his capacity, his knowledge, his competence to be able to handle the, the, the job. Um, I share all the sentiments with you. Yeah, I have expressed these sentiments over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. That it is not the best suitable for a uh, local governance system, especially. Um, at, at, at this time, 
because I am like you clearly stated, the process starts with the party. Mm -hmm. If you look at the practical aspect of the appointment process, uh, the party receives applications from potential MMMDCs in their respective areas. They do their shortlisting through an interview, and then they will submit a list of about five or so to the region and to Accra, and then the president will not will select from uh, one from 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 among the five, or sometimes he even goes out of it and and and, and, and de determines who, who which particular person he wants. But virtually, all the people who are appointed are party members, that the party that is in power. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that uh, competence is compromised. The most important factor is its political patronage, the extent to which you have supported the party, your contribution towards the fortunes of the party, um, maybe financially and, and, and otherwise. Uh, so, so it compromises competence. Serious. That is why we have a lot of problems that are happening in the system. Um, because the Constitution and the laws have defined the functions of a chief executive. And I believe that we ought to have looked out for somebody who has a requested knowledge of decentralization, who has a requested knowledge of local, de local development, somebody who has experience and expertise, be able to, 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 to bring people together, to be able to respond to their development needs, hopes and aspirations. We need somebody who is visionary. Um, we need somebody who understands, you know, the, the system and, and for that matter will be able to deliver. So the, the, the most important thing to, to be done now is to allow the electorate, the people who live within the jurisdiction of the assembly, to elect their own leaders. Let people, you know, apply of file nominations. Let 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 people go and vote through universal or suffrage, and elect their own chief executive. I even I, I, I would I would appreciate a situation where we it is done on partisan basis because national elections are based on partisanship. Mm -hmm. So why do we have to behave like the ostrich and think that? The local level, you know, elections could be not could be could be non-partisan and effective. It should be made partisan. When it, when it happens that we parties will put up better candidates, candidates who can attract the the, 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 the votes of the electorate, mm -hmm. and it will make the position competitive. Accountability will be enhanced because you don't deliver. The people who have the opportunity of voting you out after four years, now you go to Adentan. Kaka Van Le was appointed four years. She finished her term. President renominated her. Two times she has been rejected. And yet the woman is sitting there. Something which is clearly unconstitutional. But because of power play, nobody can, can speak and Ghanaians are, are afraid to, to challenge issues in court. So the woman is still there, illegitimately. So we could avoid all these things if we want to and partisanship and then elections that will determine leaders at the local level. So I think that you are perfect, you are situated the challenges rightly, and I share your sentiment. Thank you. The, the other thing that CPR is recommending, uh, until we get that time that locals will elect their own leaders, is that uh, they should give them a two-year term and you sign the bond of performance and maybe, even if it's job for the boys or your party faithful, it might still ginger you to know, look, let me do my best because I've only got two years to prove myself. Well, whoever is supposing that principle perhaps might not understand the practical workings of decentralization in this country. You see, the point is that the Constitution and the laws mandate assemblies to be responsible for the overall development of the districts. The Constitution clearly defines what a district municipal metropolitan assembly is. It is a composition of elected 70%, appointed 30%, members of parliament, and then the chief executive. That is the composition of an assembly. 
And the law clearly defines an assembly as a corporate body. So the assembly is not the chief executive. The assembly is a corporate institution with a clearly defined membership. And then it is responsible for performing the functions that are assigned to assemblies under all enactments in this country. Mm -hmm. So if somebody decides to sign a performance agreement with a chief executive, I doubt how measurable that, that performance agreement is going to be. Because, for instance, uh, the process of determining the fixing of rates maybe starts from, from, from the subcommittee of finance and administration. And they are basically assembly members who are, who are members of the committee, you know, when, uh, with, with a few uh, people, technical people who have been, you know, added on to it as, as official members. The process goes on to the executive committee chaired by the chief executive. And then they do make recommendations on it to the assembly. So ultimate decisions are made by the assembly. The assembly is the development authority. The assembly is the planning authority. The assembly is the, you know, rating authority. It is not the chief executive. So if you want to measure him, he is only there to implement decisions of the assembly. So I, I mean, it, it, it is just a non-starter to say that you want to sign a performance agreement with a man. If he doesn't know how to function, he doesn't understand the, 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 the concept of decentralization and how it, it, it works. Because it's a collective responsibility, it's a corporate responsibility. If not able, he doesn't understand the system, he will not be able to fit in well because um, there, there are inbuilt accountability systems, you know, supposedly vested in the assembly. George, I have, I, I have someone here who's a, a research fellow for Center of Policy uh, and Research. I'll let him answer that. He's, uh, George is saying that it, it wouldn't work. So how is yeah, your... Yeah. He's raised some interesting uh, points that I would want to respond to. Mm -hmm. you no, know, you are saying it is the assembly that is supposed to work. So you leave the district chief executive. Now, who leads this development? He, 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 he did say that they are, uh, the assembly is a body corporate. Let's look at corporate organizations. If the company is not able to perform, who is held responsible? The chief executive. Mm -hmm. The same constitution gives the president the, the, the authority to fire anybody. Now, if the, if the president is unable to perform, can we say that the various ministries, departments, and agencies are supposed to do their work, they are not able to do so, we leave the president? No, you can't leave the president out. So the leader is very important. So you cannot say that because the structures are supposed to be functioning, if they fail to function, you leave the leader who is supposed to give the guidance and direction. I, I don't see the point there. George, did you hear that? The buck stops with the DC or the MMDC. So uh, if the I, 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 have, I have a different view. The buck, the buck does not stop, necessarily stop with him. He, 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 he has to implement decisions of the assembly, get back to the, to the assembly, you know, with the, with the extent and levels of implementation of their decisions. I agree with him to an extent that he also has, a, 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 you know, a, a role to play. Clearly, he has to implement decisions of the assembly. So if you are going to sign performance agreements with him, then it must be tied into in the way the assembly makes decisions. Because if the assembly decides that maybe um, we need, we have determined a target of say you know 10 billion as 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 revenue that we expect, the MMC will have to put in measures to ensure the assembly attains the target. The assembly decides that we want to build 10 schools. The assembly has made that decision, and it has clearly you know allocated resources. Ultimately, um, resource inflow it doesn't necessarily lie with the with the, with the MMDC because. Assembly's resources will be necessary have to come from the district development fund, the district assembly common fund. Central government decides to delay the release of the funds. Central government sometimes even decides to 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 to, re, to release, a, a, you know, just just a, a minute percentage of the entire resources due assemblies. So the MMDC is not able to 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 implement the decisions that have been made by the assembly because of delays and uh, inadequacies in in resource inflows. Now you sign a performance agreement. The same government 
that 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 acted inadvertently to 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 delay the release of funds and to to even to a larger extent decided to to utilize the resources in a craft of MDC for for assembly. How how do you measure you know the MDC in terms of performance when the funds were not available for him to to utilize? So it will be difficult to determine the the the, the parameters. I mean that's what I'm saying. It will, be, it will indeed be very, very difficult because the man implements decisions on the basis or on the whims and caprices of a lot of factors. And most of it is, is even called by government itself. So how is government going to, to, to sign a performance agreement? It could be signed, but um, it will be relative. I, I, I mean, to a, to a limited extent, you know, in terms of the, the measurability. George, so in, in this whole haze, what can we put in place just to hold uh, the guy a little bit? I know he's waiting for his common fund uh, this year. I think they are about two seasons behind already. Three uh, quarters behind schedule. Three oh, quarters. Wow. Uh, so so uh, what can we put in place to just make sure that you know, we, we, we hold him for something? Otherwise, he's just there. <laughs> you see, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a very you know, dicey situation. If government is not releasing resources, it is up to the assembly to take up the challenge. The assemblies are corporate bodies with perpetual succession. They can sue and be sued. So if government decides that it is not going to release funds from the disassembly common fund, the assemblies are mandated by law to go to court to seek redress. Because the release of the disassembly common fund is, is, a, is a statutory responsibility of government. It is not a matter of, say, government, you know, may, may release or not release. If you look at Article 252 of the Constitution, it is stated clearly that not less than 5% of the total revenues of Ghana shall be set aside for distribution to assemblies. And Parliament shall ensure that these monies are indeed you know, made available and released on quarterly basis to MMDAs for, to undertake their development. And that is an intense provision. George, let me, so bring, if, let, let me bring Samuel in here. Sam, uh, assuming I'm a DC and I signed your bond and everything, mm -hmm. and I'm three quarters behind in meeting my development in terms of building a school mm -hmm. or a road course, you, the central government, have been giving me money. Do I then come back and say, look, wipe up all my things because it wasn't my fault this year. You didn't give me money. Oh, how then do you measure me? So in that case, you have legitimate concerns. You have legitimate concerns because central government could not give you your allocations, your resources to perform. But we have to, one thing we have to know also is that uh, apart from the district assemblies common fund, the, the, the MMDC, MMDAs, they, they have internally generated funds. They have other sources of generating funds. Property rates, rent tax, and all the other things. They can, those funds can also do something. But coming back to the question, if central government is unable to release, just this year, for instance, first quarter, second quarter, they could not get any releases. These are legitimate concerns. So in that case, you have a proper excuse to give. But we are looking at a situation where you have all this and you are not able to perform. So all things being equal. Being equal. But and he also said something. If, if you have, we we'd said earlier that the targets should be tied to the district development plan. So the system is working. What are the, the plans of the district? So you tie the person's performance to this one. So it's not like somebody is going to say, I want A, B, C, D from you, different from what the district expects. And if you have a clear uh, monitoring and evaluating system, you know that at the end of year one, I have to be at this level. At the end of year two, so even if it's a four-year project, you know that by year two, I should be at this level. And at year two, if you are not able to give any tangible reasons why you are not able to get there, then there's a problem. I'm going to, uh, George, stay with me. I'm going to take a break and come back. And I want to find out, because if, assuming, George, you were the president and you made me DC and you have been giving me money for the three quarters, I'm definitely not going to take you to court because, come on, if, yeah. if, if, I, if I do, I'm in big trouble. But we'll find out how we work around that. We'll take a break and come back soon.
Okay, we are back and we are discussing who runs, well, your local authority. Are they competent enough? Are they there because of merit? Or are they there because of party cronies or because the chiefs in the area decided that this is who we want? And are you getting value for money with whoever it is is running your local authority? And in the discussion, George mentioned that the local authority has got the power to drag central government to court to say, give me my money for my development. But uh, I hope you're with me, George. Yeah, I'm still with you. Well, thank you very much, George. You see, I'm just looking at Mr. Gbagbin's case, where he even just mentioned that I'd like to meet my president. I haven't seen him in a while. And the wolves are at him. Can you imagine him coming out saying that you held my money, so I'm going to take you to court? I mean, that would have been unheard of in our system. Yes, you see, the point is that those who are advocating for a performance um, agreement between government and MMBC is to measure, you know, the levels of their performance and attainment of targets and things like that. I mean, they are they they they, they are they are operating from a, a, a position where, you know. Um, sorry to say that um, idealism is, 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 is uh, perceived to be the order because they assume that everything is perfect. But let me state, those of us who are directly involved in the practical implementation of issues affecting decentralization, we see it differently. Government's decision or objectives in appointing MMDCs to operate at, the, at those levels are different from the original objectives and intentions of the framers of the Constitution. From 1993, people are appointed as MMDCs at those levels to ensure that government is able to rake in more support, political support, to ensure, ensure the perpetuity of government in power. That is the under, underpinning factor. MMDCs' appointments are not, you know, to the fact that they are going to be there to, to ensure that local development is, is, is accelerated, and for that matter, we are, no, 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 that is not the point. Because, look, there are practical issues. Let me, let me, let me give you an example. Mm. You look at the CCWL problem between AME and the, and the CCWL. Mm. Go and look at the genesis of it. It is seriously political. It was central government which influenced the abrogation of the contract. It was central government which influenced the allocation of, of the, I mean, the, the signing of the contract. Look at Zoom Lion. Central government did negotiations with Zoom Lion in Accra and then agreed on the parameters and forced MMDCs to implement these, you know, arrangements that central government had, had, had arranged. Recently, three days ago, the president gave a directive that any MMDC who does not ensure the, the implementation of the government's policy of uh, street naming and numbering of houses will be fired. I, I was just laughing. He, the president also said that the MMDC should ensure that they, 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 they put up structures, uh, you know, affordable housing units for people within the areas. I mean, these, these are all, these are all, with all apologies to His Excellency the President, they, they are political talk, you know. First of all, every assembly has prepared its medium-term development plan. Every assembly in this country has a medium-term development plan which dovetails into the national development plan, you know, adopted by the National Development Planning Commission. And the plans are supposed to be disaggregated yearly for implementation. Assemblies disaggregate the plans, they allocate resources on the basis of inflows from the district development fund and from this assembly common fund and from internally generated funds. But, of course, internal data funds factor very, very minute. I, I, I don't know whether my friend in the studio you know, knows this kind of Very, very minute. If you take out maybe the bigger uh, uh, municipalities. Look, first quarter of the Disassembly Common Fund for 2013 has been released. And there was no assembly in this country that had more than 40% of the projected or expected inflow to the assembly. Government retained over 60% of the first quarter of the District Assembly Common Fund in Accra to stand for and on behalf of the assemblies. And I'm telling you, these decisions of government deciding to use central the, the District Assembly resources to implement these decisions, I mean, uh, these development activities were taken by central government, which 
the collaboration and, and, and condolence of MMDCs. When they go to their conferences, the parties' priorities are discussed and they are forced on the assemblies for implementation. They, are, they, are, they use it for fumigation. Go and look at the disassembly common fund, the factor and the percentage and the, and the, and the enormity of, of deductions that are made from the DACF to undertake fumigation across the country. Take a ride to all the districts in this country. Go and find out whether there have been any fumigations or not. There have been no fumigations. But billions of trillions of CDs are retained by, the, by central government in Accra ostensibly for, for, for fumigation. And they are done with the connivance of MMDCs. So they have a common agenda to use local government resources to perpetuate, you know, the, 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 the state of the party of the government in power. That's what they do. You go and look at uh, Zoom Lion. A chunk of assembly resources are deducted in Accra. Zoom Lion's activities are undertaken in the district. So what is the sense in retaining the money in Accra for Zoom Lion to take four cities out of the five cities as administrative expenses, and then people who engage directly in the project are paid one city? Meanwhile, assemblies have uh, 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 you know, departments that are responsible for environmental sanitation. They don't even have the, the, the resources to undertake environmental sanitation. Zoom Lion, which is a company, is giving four cities. Assuming that these monies were given to the, to the Assembly's Environmental Management Department, you know, to operate, they would have achieved a lot. But it is for political purposes. I'll go and track these monies and determine where these monies are going to. They are going to oil uh, political machineries. You get my point? So how can... The same government, which is inadvertently subverting the development, I mean, the performance of MDCs, go to the extent of signing performance agreement. They are all fluke. They are not going to work. They are just to create an impression as if central government is engaged in something. Where is the assembly going to, be, to generate the resources to build the low-cost, affordable houses that the president is referring to? Go and track the, 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 the street naming and the, and the, and the, and the house numbering process. Government is deducting the money from the disassembly common fund and keeping them in Accra and engaging consultants, taking that people from Accra to go and work in the district. What, what kind of decentralization in this? And then they, they create an impression as if the MMDC is not performing. There's a political click, and we need, we need to break this. You see, if we want to ensure effective decentralization, and, and, and I mean, in this country, we need to ensure that the institution works, we need to ensure that the legislations and the, and the, and the constitutional arrangements they work to perfection. It is, it is just cosmetic to say that you want to sign a performance agreement. With, what, what, what is the performance ag agreement for? What is, he going, what is he going to undertake? Three quarters. Three quarters. We are in the last quarter of 2013, and just one quarter of the development resource is available to the district. And that one, only 40% maximum was released to the assembly. What, what, what resource is the MMDC going to use to, to, to undertake development for him to respond to the so-called performance agreement? George, does it apply to every district, or some districts have got the ears and every some are behind? District, it applies to every district. And I, I tell anybody that I am saying it. I am a presiding member of my assembly. I've been an assembly member since 1993, and I understand what I'm talking about. Let me bring Samuel in here. Samuel, so it, it makes your job very, very difficult because it's not as if even some districts have got it. So, well, let's see what the indicators are going to be there or their measure. Everybody's going to write to you to say, on this occasion, scrap it. Yes, uh, I appreciate his concerns to some extent. And I, I understand that it's a very difficult issue we're looking at. And our organization is a research-based organization. So we, are, we have started a research project that we are going into all this and we will come out with some recommendations that will, I think, I believe will make the system a bit uh, flexible and efficient. But on the other hand, um, anybody who works without specific targets, I'm not sure the person will be able to f perform well. So if he is trying to downplay the idea of performance... Uh, no, 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 he's saying uh, that all the performance yes. are already there, yeah. but there's nothing <laughs> to push that performance. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's saying that every district has got their plans, you know, as all, and all tied to the National yeah. Development Plan. However, 
like you say, you know, we're going into the last quarter okay. and only, you know, 60% of the first quarter's money has been released. So you can have all the plans you want, you know. Yeah. Uh, so how, how do you go about that? Yeah, I think it's, it's a collective issue. And as we go into that, we, we will come out with some recommendations. We, we all have to think about it and come out with recommendations and see how best we can improve the system. Georgie. Yeah, <laughs> I think we have a we have more, more bigger problem than yeah. we have time to discuss. <laughs> yes, I, I agree with you. We have bigger problems that we can, we can discuss. Look, if you look at the Disaster Assembly Common Fund, and you look at the the Constitution itself, in Article Two Forty, Parliament is mandated to ensure that all the issues, all the expectations that the Constitution have, has put in place to ensure effective and efficient decentralization. You know, Parliament has the, 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 over, I mean the, the overbearing responsibility to ensure it. You go to Article 252, and Parliament is an institution that has been mandated to ensure that the resource, minimum 5%, which is not 7.5%, is, is allocated and indeed placed into the Disassembly Common Fund for distribution to ad assemblies for development. That is what the constitution says. Then you have a disassembly common fund administrator who, submit, who is supposed to submit the, 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 the formula for the distribution of the funds to, to parliament approval. The formula goes to parliament, and the parliament decides that if you don't give us a share of the fund as MPs common fund, we will not approve the formula. And then from, parliament is able to compete in the disassembly common fund administrator and then they take a percentage of a constitutionally created fund, which is meant for distribution to district assemblies and not parliamentary. <laughs> then they take it. Then because they have compromised. Then they said, okay, administrator of the Disassembly Common Fund. If you look at the Disassembly Common Fund Act at 455, it talks about the Disassembly Common Fund administrator taking. I, 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 I mean, its resources from the consolidated fund for patients. Then they allocate a, a, a fund to it for, for, for the common fund. Then the Minister of Local Government says, okay, I have oversight responsibility, give me some. Then they also take it. They have a contingency fund, then they take it. Regional coordinating councils, which are not decentralized institutions, are also giving a chunk of the disassembly common fund. So you have a lot of mess in the, in the system. If, I, I appreciate the concern. Of, of my brother in the studio and his, I mean, the, the, the his entity and the efforts that they want to, to make in ensuring effective and efficient decentralization in this country. But I think that they have to start from the structural point of view. There are a lot of weaknesses in the system. And the Constitution is advocating for uh, 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 a, devolu a devolution of, of power and resources as well as human factor implementation. Is looking at it's looking at uh, 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 deconcentration. We have created, we have moved people from the civil service into the local government service. We have removed, dismantled one monster and created another monster. You go to a district assembly, the local government service decides to post six deputy coordinating directors to one district, a rural district. The district has no engineer. It has no planning officer, it has no budget officer, but has six deputy coordinating directors. Is that the intention, the original intention of decentralization? The assembly might, might have to determine its own priorities in terms of human resource and decide who to recruit, but not an external body to do recruitment for the assembly. But that is what is happening. That is not the intention of the constitution. You can read it from Article, article 240 to Article 256. And the intentions are there. And they are, I mean, 240 is intense, 253 is intense, and the intentions are clear. But the implementation is politicized. So we need to do that one and ensure that we devolve power, resources, and then competency to the assemblies. We elect MMDCs. We elect 100% assembly members. Go to assemblies in this country. 30% of the appointees 
with the constitution advocates in Article 243. Thank you, George. Thank you. Let me... The basis of competence. And all party people, you go there, you are the party chairman, the party secretary, the organizer, the women organizer. These are the appointees who are in the assemblies. What are they doing there? Thank you. George Holden, thank you very much. And Samuel, could you refocus more on uh, government, I mean, like this indicator? Uh, you focus more making sure that the money gets to the districts rather than go and start targeting the district because it looks as if if the money comes, the district might work. Yes, if you look at the statement we released about three days ago, the third point or so, we did, we did state clearly that government should resource the districts. And so all these resource allocations should go to the district so that they will be able to effectively execute their mandate. We made it clear, and that mm -hmm. is our position, that government must show commitment by releasing no, the not funds to I want that to be your priority because it looks as if one of the major problems here is getting the funds to yes, the Yes, it district. is a priority because if they don't get the funds, how would they operate? Mm -hmm. So it, it's certainly a priority. So what indicators do we put to government then that, you know, if you don't get the money by the first quarter, you know, what, what, what do we do? Call for impeachment, call for demonstration, what do we do? They, they have the right to go to court, as uh, George rightly said. No, but so they, they won't go to court they because go to of the court. system Sister. in which they get employed. I mean, if I gave you a job <laughs> and I haven't given you a common fund, you won't take me to court. So we, what do we do? Are we stuck? We, we're not stuck, but I believe that we, we, we will get there. It's, it's a very difficult situation. We are putting our heads together. We, thank we, we you very much. George, thank you very much for joining us on the show. I, oh, oh, good. I don't have George here, but thank you very much, Samuel. Uh, we're discussing who runs your local government, and I hope to God it's uh, somebody who is really up to the task whether or not he gets the money. But yesterday I signed off as if today was going to be Friday. No, today's Thursday. Today I'm actually signing off that tomorrow is personality profile and we're talking to uh, Mr. Kojo Yanka. Beautiful uh, interview. Beautiful interview. Stay tuned and watch it tomorrow evening. And thanks for watching uh, PM Express. My name is Nanan Sakwam.